Um, so, uh, let's get started. Although, uh, we're pretty hot here, but uh, I hope that uh, doesn't stop you listening to our class. Okay. So the goal of today is to um, uh, finish hypotesting, and then we will do uh, some maneuver. Okay. And um, don't worry. Uh, for the maneuver and the regression, we will mainly uh focus on the Excel output, as you also see from the previous test. That's what I'm asking for. So today, after today, probably we'll finish basically most of the uh, BB part. Sorry, I used the, the several thing here. I have to use the hand mic because the wireless mic is off. Second is the aircon. Oh, now they're on. So it was not on for somehow. Uh, I guess now uh, we have at least have some, uh, some uh, air. So the goal today, as I said, we will finish this. So let's quickly review uh, what we have been doing. Okay. So um, just to recall graphically what we have been doing, right? And I hope that would uh, serve the purpose of uh, the short review of today's. Okay. Um, what we've been doing is the following, right? Um, look at data, right? Say what we do is population right is the subject we want to study right for example is one point one point four billion people how much they want to pay for the hamburger right for the food the sandwich they're paying for right one point four billion you don't really know how much they want to pay right you have to ask everyone the new burger new hot dog how much they want to pay for that right and uh and that is the question right you want to focus on the case the mean, right? The mean meal or sometimes sigma square, but mainly we focus on the average risk to pay for the new product, right? Uh, assuming that say you are uh, Elon, right? Mass uh, uh, hired by him and then he want to know how much 1.4 billion want to pay for his new car, right? The cyber truck, right? How much want to pay for that thing? And we learned that how, if you want to know this, right? One way to do it is the sample mean, right? That's what we call the estimation, right? That is how we do uh, in the previous topic, right? And the current topic is another reverse case is hypothesis testing, right? Where uh, we have some idea of the meal, we want to see if the data supporting it, right? So reverse process, okay? And Last class, what we covered is the following, right? Instead of talking one population, we talk about two populations, right? About two populations. Okay. And probably you may think two population, the motivation would be thinking, okay? I look at, uh, again, the example of Elon, right? They try to sell the cyber trucks, right? to say in China, right? 1.4 billion, can't possibly do everything, right? And the question is, China is a big country, right? 1.4 billion people, possibly you may require, uh, may want to have different marketing strategy or pricing strategy towards two type of customer, right? For example, men and women, they have different tastes towards the car, right? For example, color, right? Men may like, darker, cooler thing. Women may likely like more bright, more shiny, more kawaii style, right? So the question is, are they going to uh, do different, right? So the question is, first is we want to estimate this guy, right? How much are different? Estimate that, that easy. We know how to do that. The other thing is like, we want to see if they're different, right? There's two questions here. Right, both estimation and hypothesizing, we do the same time, right? So that's a two sample problem. And uh, it the way to do it is not very complicated, right? 
the way to do it is assuming the underlying population is normal, right? The sample mean you're going to draw is also going to normal, right? If the sample mean is sigma one square, right? And the sample mean will be sigma one square over n one, right? String a little bit, right? Because the sample mean is less variation than the original one, right? Similarly speaking, if this is also a bell curve, right? Follow the mean mu two here, right? Uh, sigma two square. When you draw the sample mean, again, it will be also following the same location, but the variance strings, right? Depends on how many samples you got, okay? Now, the idea is that you have uh, two sample mean, two, right? And we know that uh, that the bell curve, right? Immediately, you know, two bell difference is still a bell, right? X1 bar minus X. X1 bar minus X2 bar is still a bell, right? The bell is located at mu1 minus mu2, right? The variance will be sigma1 uh, square over n, right? Sigma2 square over n2, right? Okay. And if we know the sigmas, one square and sigma2 square, then this is a bell curve. We know how everything to do, right? We know how to do the... Uh, Hyper testing, we know how to do a, a confidential estimator. We know how to do hypothesis testing, right? The only complication is we don't know these two, right? And we have to have some find some way to convert to T, right? That's how we do when we do one sample, right? It's a bell, but we don't know the sigmas. We convert to T, right? Will be something the same, right? Still the mu one minus mu two, right? And then we convert that, sorry, uh, it will be zero here, right? This convert to zero here, right? Under the now, this is zero, right? Convert zero here. And everything convert to from here to here, right? By uh, any number here, right? You just look at the distance between this and here and divide by square root of that and you replace by the sample version, right? That is the same as we do for the T. And the only complication lies on whether you know this are the same, right? If they're the same, uh, there are easier way to estimate the sigmas, right? Uh, because of the fact that uh, the sample variance, right? S1 square and S2 square, both are good estimate of sigma, right? Since they're the same. So you come up with a way to combine them, right? This is the SP square, right? It's a good way to estimate them. You just replace that and put it there and do the T, right? If you don't have this assumption, then you just do the same, right? But the degree of freedom has to be a little bit tricky, okay? So that would be uh, the way we estimate the uh, uh, difference between the mean, right? And we also talk about the proportion, right? So the question is like this, so just to recall, right? The question is asking, uh, we're interested in looking at, say, the population one, okay? Is like a kind of B school, right? B school, okay, B school, okay? And population two, okay? Is engineering school. Okay, the question I want to ask was like, okay, is it we have more more women in the B school than engineering school? Okay, the question is right. We have men, we have men, woman, men, woman, right? We have men, woman, men, woman, right? And pi one is the proportion of women, right? In B school, right? Pi two will be actual proportion of uh, women in the engineering school, right? The question we want to ask is, are they the same or are they different? 
right? So the hypothesis testing will be asking this. Right? And the only good, or the good thing about this is um, the sample mean, P1, yeah. sorry, sample proportion, we will locate it at, as we learn, pi 1, right? And the variance will be pi 1 minus pi 1 over n1, right? So that is the, the bell curve, but once we know this, we know this too, right? The same here, this is p2, and this is pi 2, and this is pi 2, 1 minus pi 2, right? over n2, okay? So it means the following. If we care about p1 minus p2, which is what we're testing, right? So that will be pi1 minus pi2 here. And the variance pi1, 1 minus pi1 over n1 plus pi2, 1 minus pi2 over n2, right? So this bell curve, uh, we can do everything we want. We're done, right? And probably you ask, how can we know this, right? Even though under the now this is a zero, the the trick is we can replace it by P1, right? What we observe, okay? Then we just use the a standard bell curve and we do everything we want, okay? So that is uh, what we are talking about today here. The first thing, okay? So let's go to here, let's go to these slides. What we are doing is the following question, okay? We're asking the proportion, right? Is it the number of female in the two school are the same, right? And that what is that? When they're independent, right? The difference actually follow the bell. Okay, so that is uh, what we're actually saying. Okay, this is actually is here, right? Is what it says, right? One bell here, one bell here. The difference is still a bell. Okay, so this is exactly what the slide was talking about graphically. Okay, this is what the slide talked about. And one thing is, um, slightly little bit, a uh, little bit trickier here is, um, because under the now, okay, we have a better estimate of this, right? Because they're same, right? Because they're same. Okay. Then same as the equal variance, we come up with a new way to estimate pi. Okay. Now, how do we do that, okay? To estimate this, actually they're same, right? They, they are actually, if they're same, the same mean, actually we're saying they're same variance as well, right? And the same variance means that we have good way to estimate this guy. How do we proceed? It's very simple. We just forget about the grouping. Just look at this as a whole sample, asking us how many female in total, forget about the grouping. Right? So that's the best way to estimate. So this is exactly what is said here. Okay? We estimate the uh, P prime, which is called the sample proportion, by looking at actually how many female in total and how many students in two schools. Okay? That's how we actually operationalize this one. Okay? Let's see the example, then you will understand what we're actually doing. Okay? Let's see the example. So the example here is the following, okay? We have two population binary data, right? Binary data means that they're food male or female or they like curry food or not, right? They want to buy the product or not. And the sample one have sample size 50, the other one is size 40, and sample both 60, and uh, sample portion is uh, 0.7. So let me write down the question here so that you know what we are doing, okay? So what we have is the following. So I have the population, okay? Remember this is B school, B school here. One is a B school, B school. 
okay? And this group has a lot of people, but what I'm going to get is 50, and one is 50, okay? I have 50 people get them from B school. And what he said is 60% of them are female, right? So that means that X1, how many of the female? 0.6 times 50. So it's 30 people are female and 20 of them are male. Okay? So that means that P1, right? P1 is 0.6, right? So that is the first thing we know from the question. Okay? And second thing from the question would be we are getting things from the business uh, engineering school, right? From the engineering school. Okay. And how many how many sample I got? I have N2 is 40. Right? And proportion of female is 0.7. Okay. And actually, how many female we got is 28, right? Because for 40 times 0.7 is uh 28, okay? So now what we are doing here is we want to do this, okay? What we want to do is we want to see if the female number proportion the same, okay? I want to test the following. Is pi one, which is the proportion of women in B school, we don't know, but is it going to be the same as pi two, right? Is proportion of woman in engineering school, okay? The alternative is, I just do the simple one, I just, uh, not the same, but the two sides are the same, okay? I The one side will be the similar, okay? This is the question I'm asking. I want to ask if the proportion of female in two schools are the same or not, okay? So to recall, okay, what are we looking at here, okay? Remember this P1 and P2 are the bell, right? So if you look at the difference, it's also following a bell curve like this, okay? And in particular, under the null hypothesis, okay, this will be center as zero, okay? And if you answer this question, whether the data favor this or that, it depends on how far away from zero, right? If too large, you reject. If too small, you reject as well, right? And the data we got is one is 0.6 over minus 0.7. So that's negative 0.1, okay? So the question is, is this 0.1 small enough or large enough? So that's the question. And we do know that, uh, What's the shape of this guy? Okay. The shape of this guy is supposed to be under this pi one equal to pi two equal to pi. So be something like that. Right? The same. So the variance is given by this. Why? Because the first guy is the variance of P1. This is the variance of P2, right? So uh you combine two bell, the difference, the uh, the variance just add up, okay? Now, once you have this, the question would be, okay, how to estimate this pi, okay? Pi is the same, is the total overall number of female, right? So how to get the estimate of pi? Actually, we, we use the P, okay? How to guess this? with P bar. How the P bar do? P bar is, we don't care about the, whether they are B school or engineering school, right? We're asking how many females in total, how many females in total will be 30 female from B school plus 28 female from the engineering school, right? As proportion, add up 50 plus 40, right? So you will be 58 over 90, okay? So that is the P prime. P prime is the proportion of female without 
thinking about whether they're from which school they're from, right? Now we have good last time of pi, then we're done, right? Because this is the bell curve. We know pi, we know n, then we can calculate this area, right? We can do this uh, using the set test, right? Because it's a bell curve, right? And then we're done, right? So the Z is asking how many SD here, right? So it's negative 0 0.1 minus zero over the square root of this, right? Put this number here, right? Take a square root of that, right? So you can do 58 minus 90 times uh, 32 over 90, right? One minus pi and one over n1, which is 50 plus one over n2, which is 40, right? And you calculate this number, right? This will convert us into the Z graph, right? Right, this number to, this number here is what? Then you can calculate this area, multiply by two to see if it's smaller than alpha or bigger than alpha, then we're done, okay? So the procedure will be same. So that would be the main idea behind uh, the proportion difference, okay? So let me show you the solution, right? Here is we figure out the P bar, right? That's how we do that. And we just plug in the formula, okay? Turn out that this is less than negative one. I mean, or bigger than negative one, right? I should say, right? And we know that actually, even though without calculation, right? Uh, if you use 5%, it's like 1.964 or five, right? And we know already know uh, we are not going to reject, right? Because uh, it's not far away enough, right? It's negative one, right? You will need negative two to reject, right? Or you can use the uh, p-value method, right? Calculate the area, right? Just to recall how you do that again, this guy this is zero in the Z space is negative 0 0.9848, right? We want to calculate this area and multiply by two to get the p-value. This area will be norm this, norm s this, sorry, the norm s dot this, okay, and pawn nine eight four eight true, okay, and multiply by two. Why multiply by two? Because I'm doing the two side test, okay? So that is how I get the number. Is that clear for how we do it? So that's nothing new compared to the one sample one. The only difference is um, you have to multiply two, okay? So you can see uh, all the time we do is very mechanical. It's nothing very new there. The only thing is under this condition, you apply a new formula. So this is very pretty standard uh, in statistics. So basically you just learn a new way to apply the new formula and look at this new formula applied to what context? Uh, because we're B school student, we are not from stat department. If you're from stat department, they will tell you how to prove all the things. So uh, we just need to know in what scenario, what to apply, you just put in the formula, then that's it. Okay, I hope that uh, will ease some of the concern you have. Okay. And lastly, we have to talk about uh, if we want to do interval estimate, okay? And if you do that, uh, there has to be very careful, okay? Uh, this guy, the, when you try to calculate margin of error, it's not simply this, not simply this critical value, 
multiplied by denominator. Okay. Uh, the reason is that uh, here, when we do hypothesis testing, we are working under the assumption that pi one equal to pi two. And under that, we can estimate the pi easily. Okay. So we can simplify that. But without that assumption, we can't do this uh, simplification. Okay. So we have to use the original one, P1 minus P2 and P2 minus uh, one minus P2. So we cannot use pi P bar here. Okay. Because uh, when we do uh, interval estimate, uh, we don't have the assumption that uh, they're the same, okay? So that is the only time I think we have is uh, the confidence interval will be different from hyper testing. Usually, there's a close connection between hyper testing and confidence interval, right? They're actually just almost the same thing, right? Because uh, you just take this, right? You take this over this guy, Right, compared with this number, then we are done. Right, that's usually we do when we do the two two tail test. Right, one tail is slightly different, but uh, you see the logic, right? But uh, in this one, because of we can't do simplification here, so that is uh, uh very different. Okay, I hope that uh help you. Um, so of course, uh, obviously you some of you may understand or may not, but uh you have to do the assignment to know uh, what to do, okay? And uh, to make you feel happier, might be, is uh, for the ANOVA and regression, the assignment will be given for you for free, uh, which means that I will give the assignment and the solution at the same time. So uh, everyone got free credit for that one. So everyone got full mark for the last assignment because of... Uh, uh, but we, the answer will be given, so don't worry. Okay, everything will be there. Okay, so the last assignment will be the one we give, uh, for the hyper testing. Okay. Um. So. Now we come to the very last uh hyper testing. Okay, and this one is called F test. Don't worry, it's super simple. This one's super simple. It's way simple than what we want. So let me talk about this new hypothesis testing. And for this one, it's super easy, don't worry. So this last one, we are got last theory, we are, we are going to put in your brain. So hopefully after that, your mind will be less, feel less easy. So it's not going to be difficult. So the question we're asking is very simple. The question is, I've population one, What I'm asking in general is you consider this as stock number one, okay? Stock one or portfolio one, okay? Portfolio one, assuming normal distribution, right? And I have the mean mu one and sigma one square, okay? And I also have another population. You can imagine a stock two, okay? In your head. Okay, or bonds, whatever, some investment. Okay, again, the bell curve. Okay, and sigma two square. Okay, so the question now, I no longer care about the mean. I know two stock or bond and stock need not have the same return, right? The mu one and mu two can be different or the same. I don't care. What I care now is I want to know whether they have the same variance or not, okay? So that's the question I want to ask. Why do I want to ask that? Because I want to know whether different stock have different return, right? And that's done we have asked, but we want to know the risk of the stock one and stock two, right? Because variance is measure of the risk. We want to know whether it's more risky to uh, invest, I, I should close the door. The question is asking whether the sigmas are the different, right? 
And in when you talk about ANOVA, you'll be clear later, uh, we also care about that as well. But uh, checking variant the same uh, is the thing we care, okay? And luckily, doing this is super simple. Okay, doing this is super simple. How can we test whether the variants are the same or not? That's very easy. What we're going to do is looking at what we call the F statistics. We just directly compare the sample variance of one over sample variance two. Okay. And the idea is being if this is much larger than one, right? Or we're close to zero, then we don't want to say X zero is correct, right? This F usually looks like this. Okay. Or sometimes look like that as well, but in general it's a decreasing thing. Okay. And you will imagine one is somewhere here, right? The question is, okay. Is it far away from one, somewhere here, or far close to zero? Start from zero, right? Because this is a ratio, right? So the question is, is it far away from one, right? Is it too big? If too big, then we probably don't accept that the same, right? If too close to zero, then we reject, okay? And the only complication for this is this one, the F, this ratio is not symmetric about one, okay? In T and Z, it's symmetric about zero, right? Remember, in general, right? X bar have zero here, right? And we are checking, is this, is this too far away from zero on both sides? A symmetric area here, um, this area, this number here, same as this number, Right? If it's T, it's not minus T, right? Or the Z one, depends on what you're doing, right? The same idea when you convert, okay? The only difference is when you calculate this, we're asking is this too, too big from one or very close, very close to zero, right? It's very large or close to zero, then we think this is true. If this is very close to one, then we think this is true. Is that clear what we're doing? Okay? So, and to check this table, that's very simple. We just use the F this, okay? Or we use the F inverse, okay? And um, the as we said, the complication lies on the fact that you have two-sided, okay? And the complication also the F distribution, okay, uh, will depend not only on, will depend on the sample size of the two thing you divide, okay. You can imagine that uh, you would separately depend on n one and n two, right? Because if n one is more, right, s one tend to be smaller, right, because more accurate, and n two is larger this F tend to be bigger, right? So the shape of this F will depend on independently N1, N2, right? So when you check the F, you have to depend on N1, N2, okay? So too much description, let's go to the actual example, so we have to work. So this question, not very complicated, okay? Is I have two population follow normal, okay? And the sample size is 50 here, the other one is uh, 40. And that means that N1 is 50, S1 square is 30. So that's the input I have. N2 is 40 and S2 is 20, okay? So the question is, given this, I want to see where, which is the data supporting H0 or H1. Okay, and what we know is S1 square over S2 square, zero here, okay? Looks like this shape, okay? All right, I think, 
popularize this shape. Okay. One would be somewhere here. Okay. The question is, you look at the ratio, which is S1 of S2 is this over this is 1.5. So it's somewhere here. Okay. So the question we ask is, if this area, okay, is it too small or too big? Okay. And usually how we do it is we use the critical value method, okay, uh, to calculate this answer. How to do critical value, right? What we do is look at this. We want to ask alpha over two here and left hand side, alpha over two here, okay? We look at these two value. We ask whether 1.5 within this value, okay? That's the core critical value method, okay? How to figure out this, right? If we are talking about 95% significance level, this will be F inward upon 0.025, okay? And you tell them Excel, the sample size of the numerator and, sorry. Okay. 50 and 40. Okay. So that's give us the first number, okay, which is 0. 0.553. And this number will be F dot inverse. 0.975, 50, 40, okay? And same as we do, right? But the, do know that we have to do two critical values. And this is 1.8, okay? And this 1.5 is not in the rejection region. So we really can't reject, they have different variants, okay? That's the idea. And is that okay? And a slightly tricky thing about the p-value is the p-value of this is very complicated. The definition, okay? The definition would be, uh, again, you adjust the alpha, right? Such that you reject, okay? So that means that when we calculate the p-value, uh, what we do is we look at the error on the left and error on the right, okay? And we look at the area that is smaller and multiplied by two, right? Because we don't know whether 1.5 is is, uh, is closer to the left-hand side or closer to the left, right-hand side, okay? So that's why we do it is we calculate area, look at is more than 0.5 or less than 0.5, okay? If less than 0.5, we just multiply by two give the p-value. If more than 0 0.5, we have to subtract by one, okay? Then do less than 0.5, we multiply two, multiply two, okay? The reason is being that we are going to look at uh, just the alpha such that we got a rejection, right? So that's why if it's on the right-hand side, it's on the more right-hand side, we just, this area multiply two, then we're done, right? But if we are on this one, right? Then we have to calculate the area on the left-hand side, right, or the right-hand side, okay? Uh, and multiply by two, okay? So that is how uh, we do in in the slide here, right? So that's why I do the minimum of the area on the left and right and multiply by two, okay? Actually, we have been doing this definition all the time, right? Because look at left and right, look at the area that is smaller, all by two, and that's how we do the p-value. Okay, so that uh, very much ends of our f-test. Okay, okay, and before the break, uh, I want to say a little bit about the f-test. Okay, and probably ask uh, besides comparing variance, why we do f-test? Okay, f-test 
will be useful uh, to before we are doing before we do this okay remember this slide we're comparing the mean difference under equal and equal variance and under equal variance right there are two ways to do it and you ask why we can make equal variance and equal variance why we can make this assumption is because after we do the f test we can't reject and we can proceed to equal variance if not, then we have, we have to do unequal variance. So that is the main idea behind. Okay. And sorry, I think I want to talk about maybe five minutes before the break because I want to talk about the Excel because I'll work quickly. Uh, maybe it's okay. Maybe we'll talk about the Excel after the break. Let's have a break of 15 minutes and uh, then we, we come back. So I will do the U reply and see how fast and how slow I'm going. Let's have a break of 50 minutes. Uh, we'll resume at 11.35, sorry, 33. Uh, in the meantime, I appreciate if you fill in the form. Interesting. <笑>我們是七十幾個人<笑> <笑>我都不知道 唔係啊,我試過攞人哋問佢有冇收。但係佢就 <笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> 
Oh, I hope I hope I hope I hope I Okay, 你不知道我 Oh, 因為因為現在是因為你幫緊呢邊係我整個呢邊係我個位置呢邊係我個位置呢邊係我個位置呢邊係我個位置呢邊係我個位置呢邊係我個位置呢邊係我個位置呢邊係我個位置呢邊係我
。え、ここ食べたっぽい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。はい。朝が。啊！我们明年需要开会，好吗？需要讨论。即系我觉得最近嘅数字关键。系啊，系啊，系啊。我放下啦，我唔惊，我唔放得咁重。因为大家都要求我放，咁放啦。系啦。不过放咗有个 risk 就系我可能会改少，改多少少，冇咁冇咁大方。唔係啊，佢話變 finish 咗，都係算啦。改多少少咯，因為如果我放，因為首先大家拎佢炒啊嘛，但係佢提改少改多少少啊嘛，即係改得多少少咯，英文改多少少咯，即係改咗改咗多咗，即係即係唔係啊？呢個新年啊，又一個禮拜。好長係嘛？好似四十年。我初初諗得三個翻。系，咁其實，咁其實，咁就，咁就幾多費曬啦。仲差佢咯。誒，你咧？我咁咪變咗睇得到好難攞到啲嘢。咁咪啲嘢都係有個有少少限制。啊啊。兩個全部嘢，因為全部嘢人就會就會跌咗嘅，但係盡量盡量盡量盡量盡量，我我抌上抌上啦。基本上係啦，但係我可以問翻啲講師一樣嘢，你就換數字啫嘛。對，而家都未搞清楚。咁咪即係明顯。你好，我係佢啦。咁啊，就就。好啦。今晚早晨咁咪即係拍緊先啦，咁啊。兩組一。我哋系有三条问题，都会出嚟，人接话做两个做出嚟，两个带出嚟就做。劲，我同妹妹唔使咁多啊。下啲唔曬嘛？哦，因為我唔識 citation， 我唔要啦，你話。我唔要啦，我唔要啦。Release， release 唔到。係啊，你 release 唔到。二十八十八啊！十八啊！我 release 嘅。嚇？十八。哦，我誒問咗啦，可以十日。哦，十日。Ten days， ten days。Very nice。十一號。我未 announce， announce 十一號。Just a short announcement. Uh, someone asked me the project deadline. I mean, I asked the other group. Uh, ten days, ten day more, ten day more. So they agree. Social life is social life. Ah, there are some of them. Which one? Which one? Which one?
，最少嗰個文一個人，跟住其他兩個人。啊你可以帶上一個係對你嘅關嘅咧，我我你可以變一個新嘅，你你你手可以玩啦。係叫 Esther。哦，跟住佢話仲未啊。因為好耐啦，我哋。係準時，係準時，係咗一份，咗一份準時，我哋準時。係啊，準時。我哋唔係佢開一個高檔噶嘛，我我哋係一早寫好咗，跟住嗰條友就係再講先。好快嘅，因為我哋十蚊佢哋，我哋十蚊佢哋，我哋十蚊佢哋，但係我覺得你應該你哋係俾非常追殺，唔係俾 U G O 追殺。誒係 S 就肉緊啲嘅都係。可能係因為佢嗰陣時講到明話，你哋好快啲寫，我哋就好慢，咁所以就會多啲人追手。哦，得啦得啦，呢個都係得。你哋真係唔知。係啊，機票嗰度啲錢點 refund？ 冇錢啊 ！refund 咗俾佢。嗱 ，WhatsApp 嘅問題。我哋我哋點解當期唔多？我哋打曬啲嘢咁多度，都係邊啊？嗰個邊係靈誒，即係靈寶咯。佢最後一個做嗰單先擺第一人，你真係好意思。真係咯，佢係插落嚟㗎。乜最屘佢做嘅嗰個？你好意思咁擺㗎？真係咁點解？即係順序嗰個真係一個人要幾咁 egoistic 先有嘅咩？啱啊，剛剛咁啊。咁啊！呢度有另外一個，所以要要細再細。我哋一個廿四個鐘。我哋我哋個比賽唔係少嘅，我哋我哋細啲。咁你哋 rock 嘅？哦，唔係啊，我就即係嗰個計分係點啊？一直逐個逐個 case 排位就總分咯。跟住揀翻嚟啲唔識，跟住再有，跟住有冇贏啲細 case？ 係。其實係咪咧？哦，係得個一個課，呢個誒，跟住噏到上，跟住諗啲問題，跟住諗啲問題，就係咁。咩？嗰啲咩？嗰啲好強，佢差嗰啲好氣，冇啊，百分之 Y two G 嗰啲都 OK 嘅，係啊。即係你等曬佢去揀啊！我我即係我先先俾百分之誒。唔係 Esther 都唔係，我覺得 Esther 打緊都屈打。你講 U 誒 UGO 嗰個 IG 嗰個，覺得阿天多成個張先最話打咩？哦係，嗰個係真嘅。因為嗰個係個資料認得好 ，OK， 我哋全文都冇。咁咁係用夠曬 ，OK 冇 OK 啦。咁就多過。係啊，咁呢個意義要做埋先先啦。即係如果你係一個 section， 一個人做曬你個 section， 咁我可唔可以？我打埋佢。Let's first come first. Um, so let's see. Is that zero? If value is too large in T table. Uh, yes. So suppose you calculate T and the T is like four or five, then basically the probability is like zero. Right? Oh, right? Because, uh, right? The question is like this, right? The, the question is like, uh, if you have T, right? And this is zero here, T. If your T is like somewhere here, like four or 10 or even 100, then this area basically zero, okay? So that is, I think the P value. 
we will postpone the deadline. So already 10 days, I, 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 I can't further propose. Okay. Uh, because I, I need some time to grade, right? I mean, I have to grade, uh, I have to spend my Christmas to grade your project, right? Because I need to submit your grade after the Christmas. So, I mean, you have to give me some time to grade, right? Uh, uh, of course, uh, grading is the most time consuming things when you consider teaching. So for those of you who consider teaching as a career, so if you hate grading, that will be the worst part of your job. Yeah, that is the worst part of my job. But sometimes it's also very rewarding because I see how how well you're doing. So the project will be fine. Um, yes, extend already 10 days. So I hope that is refined. Um, oh, this is a very old thing. Uh, I think here people are too young to understand this, but I guess. Uh, I think solution is already uploaded, right? Because I think, uh, I think solution is there. No, two is here. Uh, three. Yeah, I will upload three. Uh, later. Okay. Um, I will upload three. Uh, later today. Um, or or the. Or the uh the TA will upload. Extend more or uh, ten days already. So I told you, uh, I already have a miserable time in the Christmas. So give me some more time, okay? <laughs> and um, I do understand that this is very, a, because this is like a problem that is applying formula. So the main thing later you will see is I try to we give the formula. That hopefully you understand what's going on when we give the data. I will show the Excel, then you will see what, what's going on. So it's not uh, something uh, that you have to uh, work it out in practice. So uh, just make sure today is not Monday. Yeah, F test. Yeah, that's great. That's So the speed is okay, rather, I think. Just to make sure that uh, you have to do the assignment to understand what's going on. Because it's a math class. If you don't do the assignment, especially operational, it's not really math, but it's operational. You need to know the formula, what to apply, when to apply what. So it's not something that I can do it for you, right? No matter how much how many times you listen to lecture, you don't understand. You have to really apply and you know. Uh, that's the purpose of the project as well. Uh, yeah, I hope your final will be good. Um, as some of you request, uh, the solution for the past year paper, uh, usually I don't want to release because of, uh, if I release that people will take the, take the solution to the exam and then everyone got almost full mark. That means I have to make the exam more difficult. So since you request, so I should I, re, should I release? Okay, but I will discuss. It's okay, I discuss. I will discuss the last class without releasing the solution. I will discuss it. You can take it down, that's fine. But I'm not going to release the written one. I'll talk about the answer in the class. Okay, but I will not release the written solution to that. Okay, if you attend, this will be fine. Okay, so I will, I will still, I will tell you the answer but without writing down, you can write down, you can bring that, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, yes, it's very tired. I, I do agree. I mean, every one of us tired, okay? So that's why for the upcoming ANOVA and the thing we will rely on Excel, okay? And same for the exam, I'll focus on Excel, okay? Excel output, so, okay? So hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully that is good. Uh, yeah, final QF one. Uh, uh, as well as your professor as well. <laughs> I have hard time to figure out that. Yeah, it's very sleepy. True. Ah, yeah, so sleepy. So everyone feels sleepy. Um, I do understand that it's super sleepy. Um, anyway, so before I end here, uh, let me uh, excel and then we'll talk some ANOVA. Okay, so don't worry. I'll make sure that ANOVA is not something too crazy. So Excel is trying to tell you how you do the Hypothesis testing quickly, okay? 
So probably we have done, I, I have to put down, uh, no, I don't have two hands. So, so the question now is, okay, I want to do hypothesis testing, right? One tail test is very easy. You know how to do the formula, there's no need to, I tell the Excel to do it, right? But two tail, you say, okay, come on, so complicated. How can I remember everything, right? The fact is, you don't need to remember, right? The thing is, I tell you because you need to understand what the Excel output comes out, right? That is actually why, why I am, I I put the Excel there, right? Because but I I I'm going pretty fast on the two tail two sided test. Is I don't expect you to perform it in the final, right? But I expect you to, how to know how to do Excel. Okay, so let me tell you how to do Excel. Suppose I have the data of the two two sided. Okay, okay. So suppose I have x one and x two here. Uh, I don't. I, I put on the mic. Sorry. Uh, okay. So x one, x two. I have two set of the data. So I have data like this. Okay, one, two, three. Uh, I just put one random data here. Okay. 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 So now the question is like this, okay? I don't know, like this, I have a, okay? I want to see, of course, in your real world has much more, much longer data, okay? I want to do the t-test, right? I want to see if they're different or not. I want to emphasize the t-test, right? How to do that? Excel will immediately give the p-value, then you're done, okay? So I'll do that already. You can see the Excel, uh, my slides, but I just do it quickly. So do it, I will do the t-dot test. Okay. Test. I will do the covariant search. How I do this is not that difficult. I do t dot. Okay, t dot test, the t test. Okay, and t test. I just tell them what data I'm doing. So the first data is a two to a seven. The other data is b two to b seven b a. Okay, that's it. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know why the uh, Excel is in Chinese. I I guess someone opened the Chinese version, uh, but uh, if you read the Chinese, this is called one tail and two tail. If you in your in your in your laptop, if your Excel is uh, English, that would be English. I don't know why it's Chinese for some reason, but this one is the one tail. Two is two tail. Okay, so let's do two tail. You can do one tail, whatever. Okay. And you tell them which type you're doing. Okay. And the first one is called pair, right? Remember, I told you the pair that actually we study. And second one is called uh, this is same variance. Three is different variance. So I do the second one. Okay. And then I'm done. Okay. So this is a p value. That's done, right? In this case, I can't reject. That's it. Okay. Although the formulas were complicated in your slides, right? But only thing you need to do is this one. Okay. I don't expect you to operationalize that in your. Uh, I mean, of course, you do that in an assignment because I want to train you. But I don't expect that you reproduce that in your exam. Right. So, if you worry about the complicated formula, don't worry. I'm not going to be crazy to ask you those, but. But I am, I still have to tell you how to get that, right? It's just like, hey, not just a part of formula P is more or less than 0.5%, right? It's not serving the purpose, right? Uh, the second one is unequal. So let me do that. P dot test. Same thing. I will have the first row and the second row, okay? 
I now still do the two tail. I do two. Okay. Uh, if you do one, it's one tail, it's the right, right tail. Okay. So it gives you the right area. So, which means that if you want to do the uh, right tail or left tail, the left tail, then you have to do minus one to get the right tail. I think. Let me check. Uh, what is the Excel give you? Uh, uh, Excel gives the right tail. Okay. Uh, that means that if you do the left tail, then you subtract from one. Okay. So if I do an equal variance, I use three. Okay. So then we're done. So that's how you get the answer. Okay. If you want to see T test, an equal variance, two sided, this is what you have. That's very simple, right? Uh, maybe I should do the formula. Test here. So that's what I have, right? That's rather easy. Okay, that's it. Okay, the next thing I want to show you the other is called paired T. Okay, paired T, right? Is paired means that remember the question, right? I have a one person, right? Group of people, how happy he is before he had a girlfriend, right? And ask how happy he is after he has a girlfriend, right? I look at the difference between the before have girlfriend after girlfriend, look at the difference between how happy he is, right? And check, right? So is paired pair. by pair it means that I must have for each observation I have uh two observations, right? So I don't use this data, okay? So what I'm gonna do is a t test. The first observation and second observation. And I do uh two tail and I do uh one as a head. Okay. So that's how I do that. Okay. So that actually tells you all the three tests I cover. All right. And um and if you have seal one, seal one, seal one, right? Uh, you can just apply. Uh, they don't have the they don't have the proportion one. I don't think they have. Uh, but uh, the last one is the F test is here. F test. F test is very simple. You just highlight the two things, then you are done. F dot test. Okay, give me the A1 to A7 and A2 to B8, then we're done, okay? So you can see the variance are, uh, so then look at the p-value, then you are done, okay? So that is how you get the answer, right? So for the two sample tests, it's not complicated, right? Of course, I don't expect you to remember the formula except you applied it in your assignment. Right. So, uh, but you, I hope you remember how to do the Excel formula, right? That is something that I would expect you to know, Excel formula, but not the actual calculation. But of course, I want you to opt to work on the assignment because otherwise you don't know what we're doing, right? So assignment, I still I, I ask you to work out, but for the exam, I I should not ask you, right? If I ask you, I expect you to know how to write down the formula, right? You should know how to write down the formula, right? Is that okay? Is there any question? Okay. One side of test, I will ask you how to operationalize that by hand, pencil and paper. Two sample, I expect you to know how to handle the Excel. Is that clear? So for ANOVA and the regression, for the next two classes, I also expect I expect you to know how to read the Excel output. That's the thing I need you to do. Okay. Any more question? Okay. Let me save it later. I'll upload it to the uh, to the. Uh,
to the bad part. Let me upload it. I'll upload it because if I don't, uh, I may forget, then you will, uh, you may have, uh, you may, for, I may forget. Okay, so um, now we quickly go to ANOVA, okay? Don't worry, there's no, almost no new concept to that, okay? So let me quickly try to uh, tell you what the last two topic is about, is ANOVA and regression. So don't worry, uh, we are focusing on concepts and Excel output, okay? Not the actual calculation because it's so complicated, except uh, unfortunately you don't have assignment for that onward, right? So assignment ends here. So, but I I, I want you to know, uh, I still want to illustrate what are we doing, okay? So the two thing about ANOVA and uh, about the uh, regression is very simple. ANOVA simply means the question, what we have so far is uh, population one, population two, right? and they are bell curve, right? And what we're looking at, mu one, mu two, right? The question is asking, is mu one equal to mu two, right? And the idea is because I want to see uh, if the two groups are different, right? A man and woman willing to pay for the product differently, right? Or uh, is people in the city would willing to pay the same uh, compared to people in the rural area, right? And that allow you to decide or different age group, are they going to want to pay differently, right? That will be the question. But one important question is how to extend the comparison from two group to more than two, three, four, and five and more, right? They're all bell curve, okay? And can we say, compare whether they have the same mean or different mean? Is it going to be different? Okay. So what I'm asking is like, is it say, for example, question is in CHK, we have nine colleges, if I'm correct, right? I'm asking is for nine different colleges, are they have the same number of female? Or are they have same, when they graduate, are they earning the same? Is college have any impact, right? Or uh, more commonly actually used in medical tests is we have nine different treatment for a disease, right? We want to see nine different way, do they have different thing, right? Or business is I have nine different stores, in Hong Kong, one in Hong Kong, one in Kowloon, one in whatever, nine location. Are the nine location behave differently or the same? Okay, compare mean of different groups. Okay, that is what it's asking. It's called ANOVA. Okay, of course, at the end, you have, you later you will see ANOVA is called analyze of variance and variance you will see with F test. So at the end, at the end of the day, you look at F test, look at the P value, look at 0.5 or less than 0.5, then you're done. Okay, basically like this. You can look at the P value. Okay, 0.5, this is basically what we're asking. Okay, I'll tell you detail more soon, but this was an is. Okay, different grouping. We want to see different group have same mean or different mean, right? Basically extending the T test to more than two groups. That's it. That's an over. Uh, we'll spend today's class and next class and talk about this, so don't worry. Uh, mainly Excel output, okay? So I don't expect you to know the calculation, but I need, need to tell you the, what the formula need to those calculations, okay? And um, the very last topic, okay, um, is talk about regression. I think we will... Uh, talk about this 
quickly. Okay. For regression, uh, basically is the following. We have two set of data. Okay. I want to look at say income and education. Okay. And this is how many school or year in school. Okay. And usually you will see this in the data. Okay. Something like that. Okay. And the question is we can do covariance or correlation coefficient to tell them are they positive related or how strong they are looking at the correlation, right? That's done. But regression, which would be the most important model that you learn for all statistics, I would say, at least for applied statistics, is I have income here, education here, okay? I want to come up with the way to draw a line here, okay? I want to fit a curve, okay? And what it's doing here is I change the data to a simple line. I condense my knowledge from data to a model, a method model, right? It's a line, right? Y equal to uh, A plus BX, for example, okay? We will tell you how to estimate A and B, that's estimation. We will test hypothesis whether A equals zero or B equals zero, hyper testing, okay? And based on this, right, we condense the knowledge to this one and we do things on here, okay? So that's basically the rest of the three classes we're going to talk about, uh, four classes, right? Okay, but we we'll, first thing first, we talk about ANOVA, okay? So don't worry, this is the last few classes basically focus on Excel. So we're not going to focus too much on calculation because no one actually do calculation, not even me, okay? Never no one do it on paper, okay? Basically, computer do everything, okay? So you need to understand from now on is the concepts, okay? And some of the formulas that you need to know, okay? Uh, to understand what is it about, right? You see the report from Excel. My goal is to tell you each Excel output, what are those, okay? And then you know what they are, what they mean, and that's it, okay? And how to use it, okay? We're not going to tell you, we're not going to require you more than that because we're in B school, right? So we are not expect you to know all the probability prob prob property of all those, okay? Just how to use it. And what are we doing, okay? One way and over. So because of time, we'll focus on one way and over. Two way and over, probably we'll just skip, but uh, the idea is same, okay? Uh, one way and over means that I just focus on one type of grouping. Two way and over, we, uh, we will talk about age and gender. Right, but we just focus on one way, uh, at least for this class. Okay, we're trying to the data. Okay, we not only have income or where's to pay, also group pay. Right, the group pay we recall G. Okay, uh, that is groups. Okay, you'll be more clear soon. So the data we have is each observation. The first of X one, right? Suppose the income, right? X one, right? And G1 will be grouping, okay? The group can be the C number of group, okay? There's group one, group two, and group C, okay? So let's see the data, what we have, okay? This data is what you collect, okay? Suppose the data you collect is how much time you spend on this class, okay, to study, right? Suppose what I have is, I ask one of you, maybe you spend one hour for this class each week, and I ask which college you're in. Okay, you're NA, okay? And I ask, okay, you spend two hour, okay? Turn out you are from CC college, okay? I spend, uh, the next one, I, I spend 2.5 hour. Actually, you are UC, okay? Another guy is zero hour. Why? Because you are maybe in Seoul college, right? That's joking, okay? No, no discrimination against it, but uh, in my time, Saw College is the people think about Saw College is fun. So people spend time on doing things, not statistics, it's, which is okay. Uh, so uh, maybe you are in other college, right? Depends on what you are, right? Maybe another guy 
uh, in Saw College, actually, a, it's a who study a lot, 10 hours. Okay, so someone, so on and so forth, right? Each one I have observation, also know which group they're in. Okay, so that's the data. Usually, that's what we collect. Okay, okay, so I hope you understand what's going on. Okay, the thing is, I want to, the idea is, I want to see if the mean is different by group. Okay, is different group have different mean and same mean. Okay, is it? That is a question. Okay. And we are going to make ourselves crazy uh, because of the way that uh, to write the formula, okay? But don't worry, uh, the way we do the math is the notation is very complicated, but the concept is very simple. I'll tell graphically what it means that it would be very simple, okay? So here is the notation is I have uh, x, i, j, Okay, the first one represent which group you're in. Okay, so X1 means you're in the first group. Okay, first group may be NA, right? The second group may be CC, so on and so forth. Okay? You give the name, okay? And the second subscript represent which observation you're in. This is the NA first observation. If X12 will be NA second observation. If X23 will be CC third observation. Okay? So N I is the how many in the group I? So N1 is in total how many people from NA? Okay? And big N is all add together. Okay? So Looks tricky, but I show you the form uh, table. If you write in this form, which is the form that you would do it when you do Excel, okay? So this is the form you expect to see, okay? What you will see in the data would be like this. NA College, CC College, SAW College, UC, and so on and so forth, okay? You ask them how many times they sleep last night, okay? Maybe any has sleep eight hour, one guy seven, one guy six, and one guy work on his projects, sleep nothing, right? And one guy sleep one hour, two hour, right? And three hours and so forth, okay? And this is, if n is one, right? So this is x11, one, one, right? And suppose we have 10 observation, this is x110, okay? So and so forth, okay? So these are the data you have, and this is data format you'll be using when you do Excel, okay? So this data format, okay? So what you do is by group, you order the data, okay? Doesn't really matter which one go first, which one go second, doesn't really matter, but this is the data set, okay? So we will describe our formula based on this, okay? Look at this table and then you will see how to do this formula. So don't worry, the formula, you don't operationalize that, but you actually, see understand what they're calculating, okay? Now, let's go step, step by step, okay? The assumption of NOVA is the following. So let's draw a graph and then you will see what is actually asking. Our NOVA is the following, okay? So we are talking about like this. Well, suppose this is the bell curve for NA, and they have mu of Na and sigma square, okay? The same shape. Maybe Uc, Uc is here, okay? Same shape. Uc is here. Maybe uh, Cc is here, okay? So the question we're asking is, whether actually there's no difference between this, okay? So whether the hypothesis is asking mu Na is equal to mu Uc is equal to mu Cc, okay? So that's a question, okay? Are they having the same shape? 
under the assumption we have, assume, are they actually located at the same location? Okay. So that's the main idea. Okay. And how we actually do this, okay, we'll use the F test. Okay. Compare variance. How we compare variance? The idea is very simple. Okay. I'll tell you that before we do the formula. I don't know if we have enough time to do the formula, but I'll tell you the overall law logic we're doing. Okay. What we're actually doing is, okay, we are saying that they're same. Right? That means that this, we look at x bar NA, x bar UC, x bar CC. Okay, this three group, okay? And they're the same location, right? So we can calculate variance, right? You can calculate variance of the sample mean for each group. Okay, look at how different they are, right? Call variance. Okay, across variance. Mm -hmm. um, and usually later you will see this is referred to MSG, okay. Uh, later you will see, okay. And the next one, we compare the other variance is comparing within NA, I look at data NA, okay. I look at the data, how they separate each other, okay. And the same, I do the UC and I do the CC, okay. I focus on data of NA. I calculate sample variance, okay. I look at the UC, I calculate sample variance. I calculate CC, I calculate sample variance. That I come up with another call MSW, okay? is variance within each group, okay? So variance across group. If this is true, these two should be the same. I will prove it, but the idea that if they're the same location, right? This thing cannot be different too much. So that is, I do the F test, compare these two, okay? If they're different, I reject it. That's the overall idea, okay? We don't do any proof of that, but that's the main thing. So I compare this. So that is exactly, uh, of course, I will tell you the method, but the overall idea is, at the end of the day, we're complicated. I compare this to F, right? If too far away, it's one-sided. If it's a right tail test, okay? So if it's way too big, right? Then reject, right? Because this variance must be larger, right? Because this guy, right? If they're different, they should be much larger than within itself, within this group. So it's a one tail test, okay? So that is the thing. Uh, of course, we will tell you how we define MSG, MSF, so and so forth. But at the end of the day, uh, what we want to know is at the end of this, I don't expect you to know all the calculation, but I expect you to understand, which I will, actually I asked last exam, is to look at this table, okay? At the end of the day, look at this p-value, 5% or not, okay, of course. I will tell you what are these, how to calculate that. Okay. At the end, this is thing matter, this number. Excel will output this guy, okay? So I will tell you, next class, tell you how we come up with this, okay? That will be the goal for ANOVA, okay? So you just need to know how to get this number, and that's it, okay? So not very ambitious for the next class, okay? Um, so I will... I think it's time. So I will see you on Friday.